This video describes the newly redesigned AccuStop for the AccuWedge segmenting system. The AccuStop is used to adjust the lengths of the segmented wedges when slicing these segmented wedges on a bandsaw using the AccuWedge segmenting system. This video describes the design of the new AccuStop, describes its new features, which includes a new indexing system, and also demonstrates its use and applications. I'm John Manier from AccuSlice. In this video, I'll be describing the redesign of the AccuStop system. The AccuStop system is used with the AccuWedge system to adjust the length of your wedges when you're cutting segments for segment wood turning on the bandsaw using the AccuWedge system. My inventory of parts for the AccuStop system is just about exhausted, so it's time to re either reorder parts or think about redesigning the AccuStop system. So I thought I'd redesign the AccuStop system because I'd like to do a couple things. The first is I'd like to reduce the cost, and the second I'd like to create sort of indexing system. So when I turn this, plunger a certain amount, I know exactly how far in and out this plunger moves. That way I can accurately set the length of the wedges that I'm cutting. The major cost of the AccuStop system is the magazine clamp. This magazine clamp retails for almost $50, so that's over half the cost of the AccuStop system itself. So I thought I could replace that magazine clamp with some other magnets. The other cost is this machining of this aluminum bracket. And I thought if I could use my 3D printer, I could print these out, be more cost effective to print them out rather than machine them. So there's my two major goals, is to reduce the cost and create some sort of indexing system. This is our current AccuStop system. It consists of a aluminum L-bracket, a magnet clamp, and a plunger. This plunger rotates its threads in this L-bracket, and by turning this I can adjust my length of my plunger, and that determines the length of my wedges when I'm cutting them on the bandsaw. So I'm looking at two major things to reduce the cost and make the system more efficient. First of all is replacing this magic clamp with some small magnets. I can put some magnets on the bottom and uh, eliminate this and I can reduce the cost by probably half the cost just by replacing this magic clamp. The other goal was to create a sort of indexing system. And my first thought was to use an indexing system much like we have on the Accu Slice system, but this would raise the cost quite a bit. This is an expensive way to you know, adjust the length. It would be very accurate, but very, uh, very costly to do a system like this. So I need to design a different way to adjust the uh, lengths of the wedges. So I made several prototypes testing some of these concepts. This is my first design concept for this new AccuStop system. I used my 3D printer to print out this mount. It's a little bit thicker and wider. It's a little longer than the, the existing system, but it's much more massive. And I want it a little bit wider so I have a lot of room for threads because there are plastic threads in here. And I still use the, uh, the magic clamp, but I added a second indexing magnet on the bottom. And the two of these actually hold the system much better than just the magic clamp itself. But I thought I could replace this magic clamp and actually put two of these on the bottom instead. And again, reduce the cost by almost $50 just by replacing this magnet. The other issue with the uh, magic clamp is this handles in a way I can't make this knob very big. I like to make this knob larger so it's easier to turn. And again, there's no indexing system here. There's no room to put an indexing system in here with this magic clamp. So that was my first prototype. Then I made several versions after this, each time improving the design. And this was my final version. And actually, it's a little bit shorter than this version. I got rid of the magic clamp. It has two magnets on the bottom that hold it firmly in place on the bandsaw table. It has a larger knob on here, so it's much easier to turn than the previous knob. And the knob has these pin systems, which are indexed. Each of these white protrusions here rotates this pin such that it moves in and out 5,000 of an inch. So each time I rotate this from one pin to the next, it's 5,000 of an inch movement. And I put this indexing system on the base of it so I can calibrate that. So when I line my pin with one of those, uh, with that fin, and if I rotate it from one pin to the next, I know I've moved this in 5,000 of an inch. So that's my indexing system, which works pretty well. And I'll show this a little bit later how I actually use this to set some uh, wedge thicknesses to uh, give me different diameters of segment of rings. So this is my final design, and I'm doing some testing. I've done a little bit of testing on this, and uh, just to verify that it works quite nicely. It holds very firmly on the bandsaw. It definitely is much less expensive. It's probably going to sell for about half the price of the existing AccuStop system. And it, with the index system, it's actually more versatile. The pitch on a 1 half inch diameter steel screw is 20 threads per inch. Therefore, each revolution of this screw will advance the end of the screw by 50 thousandths of an inch. 
There are 10 white pins or protrusions on the front lip of the black knob. Therefore, if I turn a knob from one pin to the next pin, this will advance the end of the screw by 5 thousandths of an inch. The molded fin on the base of the AccuStop is used as a reference point to visualize the movement from one white pin to the next pin. This is a very simple but very effective method of adjusting the movement of the screw and set the lengths of the segments that are being sliced. I designed a new AccuStop using the Fusion 360 software. I won't go into a lot of detail on the actual programming, but I did want to better visualize the features of this new design. First of all, the main body is much more robust than the previous version of the AccuStop. The main upright support is 3 fourths of an inch thick and includes a threaded mounting hole for the 1 half inch by 20 thread per inch screw. Turning the base reveals a tapered fin, which should be used as a reference position for the indexing pin. I made the base of this fin fairly large to minimize any chance of breaking during use. On the base are two recessed openings for the two magnets which will be later installed. I also designed the black knob for the screw with 10 white index pins. Turning the knob from one index pin position to the next index pin position will advance the screw by 5 thousandths of an inch. So let me briefly describe the installation of this new AccuStop. And let me move this uh, AccuWid out of the way so you get a little more room. And I find the best way to remove this is not to, uh, it's pretty hard to slide. I mean, it's on there really tight. I find the best way to release it is to actually tilt it. So grab it by the screw and put your fingers down the base and actually just tilt it. And then it comes off. But that's held on the table pretty well. I mean, that, that's hard to slide. I mean, that's on there really good. So I said just, uh, I usually put my fingers around here, my fingers here, just tilt it, and that works pretty well for removing it. To install it, again, I make sure that my uh, uh, ramp is, you know, again, parallel to my uh, table. And then I use, uh, I hold this at the same angle, and slide this edge along the edge of the uh, ramp. And then just get this distance as far out as you want it from the bandsaw blade. And then just slowly lower it until it locks in place on the table. And that, that slide will be... You know, parallel to the ramp, which again is perpendicular to the carriage, and so this is actually uh, you know parallel to your bandsaw blade, so that's nice and straight. And that's all it is to install it. it comes off and on pretty easily, but by the same token, it holds pretty well too. Now those two magnets do hold things pretty pretty st sturdily, and you can't push that in when you're using the Aki Wedge system. But that's all set to go now. Let me demonstrate how I use this indexing system to adjust some wedges. I wanted to make some red segment at uh, disc to match the diameter of my segment at disc here. So I made my first one. I thought got it pretty close, but it's uh, it's a little bit a uh, little bit too big, about uh, almost three sixty an inch too big. So I set my wedges, I, I set my index pin, I left it where it was set. And what I did is I rotated this from two notches. In other words, I moved it in actually 10,000 an inch. I went from one position and went over two notches and moved it and I made a second segment of disc. And that came out pretty close. It's maybe off by uh, oh, less, than, less than an eighth of an inch. So again, I did it again, I moved it over two more indexing points, another 10,000 of an inch, so a total of 20 thousandths from this original one, and that fits almost exactly the same diameter as my segmented disc. So that showed me that, you know, moving this thing, and I actually measured these, and the diameter of this one was uh, 3.15 inches. When I index this over 10 thousandths of an inch, this became 3.05, in other words, it moved it in a tenth of an inch. So the diameter of this is a tenth of an inch smaller than this. And I moved it over two more, another uh, ten thousandths of an inch, or a total of twenty thousandths. This came out to two nine four, or another 0 0.11 inches. So this, from here to here, was the diameter changed by 0 0.1 inches, and from here to here, 0 0.11 inches. And that's just by calibrating this with this indexing pin system. So that's pretty useful when I want to try and match something. I want to get the same, you know, segment at the diameter of two to a disc and use different woods for doing that so I can you know tweak it in and calibrate it using these indexing pins. One of the other major uses for the indexing positions 
will be in setting up wedges to come to a perfect point in the center. Making segmented discs to come to a perfect point in the center is quite difficult. And I can use this indexing system if I make a wedge and it's off by a small amount. I can just turn this a small amount and know exactly how much I turn it. If it's too much or too little, I can adjust it and go back and do it again. So let me actually show you how I did that for an application. So what I wanted to do here, I wanted to make a segment of disc that goes to a perfect point in the center, much like this maple segment of disc, which I made with this system. And these are all, this is all, what, 18 segments going to a perfect point in the center. Very, very accurate. And so what I did, I set my AccuOH system up with the new AccuStop. And I set the system to where I thought it would be pretty accurate. And I indexed my position right on a, right on one of those, uh, the, the tip of one of those points, right on the uh, indexing uh, position there. And I ran a set, and I ran this first set of segmented disc. And when I ran these, the one definitely has a flat on the surface. I don't know if you can see it in the video, but there's definitely a flat on the surface of that piece. You can see it there. Not much. You know, it's maybe only you know two or three thousandths of an inch, but there is a flat on the surface, and that won't give you a perfect point in the center. So what I did next is I took my indexing system, which is set on one of those points, and I turned it in. I moved it in five thousandths of an inch, which is one one pin position, and I made another set of segmented discs. And this one came out near perfect. Both of these wedges are have perfect points on the on the top. And the two segments are exactly the same length, which is important. Notice I line the bottoms and the tops are perfectly the same length. So then I took it one step further and I turned this in another five thousand of an inch and made another set of segmented disc. And that's where this set came in. I thought they looked pretty good, but when I aligned the two, say the two bottoms of the one and measured the length, one is shorter than the other. You can see it there, it's just only maybe you know, three, four thousand shorter than the other. And that's because when you're slicing on the AccuWid system and you're slicing on the side, the bandsaw blade tends to pull in and that makes it short. And so I know this one went too far. So I just moved it back, one, one, uh, one of these index positions, and that's my setting for making my segment of discs. So I'm going to go ahead and now make a set of segment of discs, and it should come out to a perfect point in the center. So I set my AccuStop again just like I did previously. This has a straight edge on it, so I can line that against the edge of the uh, ramp. And so by having that aligned perfectly with the edge of this ramp, I know this face is perfectly parallel. And I set this up, and I that's in my position. It's set on one of those pin positions where I determined to be the accurate length for my wedges. And now I'm all set to cut some wedges with the Accu wedge system. As I do previously, just put it against the uh, AccuStop, and those magnets hold that quite firmly in place, so it's very accurate. So my system is set up to cut uh, 18 segments. Uh -huh. Cutting 36 is pretty hard to get them all going to a perfect point. It's too, too many segments, but 18 is about the limit, so I, can, uh, I think I can cut 18 segments going to a perfect point. Now, it'd actually be easier, but uh, I've been able to do 18 pretty, pretty regular. So again, Let's see, I can stop and we'll start cutting and we'll cut uh, 18 of these. Next, I'll go sand the burrs and fuzzies off of these, and then we'll assemble them and see what they look like. And just from those center pieces, I made two segmented discs going to a perfect point in the center. This concludes this video on the new AccuStop for the AccuWedge system. This new AccuStop will replace the existing AccuStop in the next few weeks. The main advantages of this new AccuStop is, first of all, its cost. It will be selling for about half the cost of the previous model. This cost reduction was mainly due to the elimination of the mag jig clamp. This new AccuStop uses two permanent magnets on its base, 
which will securely hold the accuracy stop onto the bandsaw table for the accurate slicing of the segment at wedges. The other main feature is the new indexing system, which enables the accurate linear movement of the screw to adjust the lengths of the segments being sliced on the bandsaw. This adjusting knob has 10 index positions for the linear movement of the adjusting screw in increments of 5 thousandths of an inch. Once again, thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, concerns, or comments, as always, please give us a call or drop us an email. And thank you once again for watching.